boy Bonner Crusader. You're watching EMP Everyday Life, Music and Photography. And today I'm talking about the late great Notorious B.I.G.'s album, Ready to Die and Life After Death. Uh, a friend of mine wanted me to touch on this topic. So, you know, here we go. He asked me a question the other day, you know, proof in the play. Asked me a question the other day about, you know, which was the better album you know, ready to die or life after death. And when he asked me, I was kind of, you know, couldn't give him, couldn't give him an answer. I was had the sort of like the the dare in the headlights look. So I couldn't say off the top of my head, you know, what was the better album. So what I did was I went back and I re-listened to both albums. And the conclusion I came up with is that I there's no a clear cut favorite to me. I can't put one album against the other. Um, they both have some standout joints on there, and they both have some, and they both of them, can, you know, had some joints on there that I thought, you know, could have been left off the album. In my opinion, you know, though very solid, solid albums, I don't, I wouldn't consider any of both, any of these a classic album. Um, I'll start off with Ready to Die. You know, Ready to Die, as you're looking at it now, obviously, it's not the original cover, it's the remastered version. But I digress. The, uh, Ready to Die came out, you know, '94, and uh, 1994 had a lot of good albums to come out that year. You know, you had Nas's Illmatic, that that's pretty much stands on its own, and you know, and that's that's just a topic that can be discussed later. But you had Nas's Illmatic. You had um, Outkast dropped their first album, Southern Playalistic. Which was a very, very good album, classic album, I mind you. You had uh, Red Man, There's a Dark Side. Uh, you had Warren G. Um, uh, you had Warren G's Regulate album that came out that year. You know, you had uh, you had a whole plethora of albums that come out. You know, we all know that. Well, I know, you know, '90s hip hop is my favorite era of hip hop, but I think 1994 was a big breakout year for um, for for hip hop. And I think, you know, Ready to Die, with this album, you know, it was a big buzz, you know, Biggie was already on the scene, you know, for, you know, some other tracks that he had, you know, Party and Bullshit off the um, Who's the Man soundtrack. And, you know, Big Biggie was, you know, making buzz, so the album was, you know, highly anticipate, anticipated, you know, mainly for, you know, I guess this album, you can say, get credit, you know, gets credited for bringing the East Coast back, you know. But, you know, me personally, I would give that credit. I think Craig's Mac flavor in your ear started giving back that East Coast buzz. And I don't think the East Coast really went anywhere. I think when you say bringing the East Coast back, I think they talk about East Coast rappers actually selling records on the level of uh, West Coast artists. And which they were, you know, and which they were able to do, you know, once, you know, um, Biggie and, you know, the Bad Boy era dropped. But... You know, I don't think they ever got they never got on the the level as far as selling records as the West Coast did. I, I mean, other than you know Jay Z, but the, the West Coast is probably you know just stand stood alone in that whole early '90s era as far as you know making noise, you know selling records. But this album, very good album, you know has some cuts on there. I think Easy Mo B, I would give you know. I th doesn't get enough credit for the, the work that he put into here. You know, he did the um, the Ready to Die. He did Machine Gun Funk. He did the What with the, with Method Man. And um, you know, Easy Mo B. You know, really put you know really put into some work on here. And then you know, you closely had the Puffy's um, Hitman that was on here. Of course, you had Primo's you know track on there, Unbelievable. So you know, it was a it was a very good album. I thought it had some you know commercial joints on there. You know that that could have that could have been left off a couple of joints on there like you know um, respect and you know some other stuff on there. But overall, I know I thought I thought it was a very good you know album. Um, so, but what I for me to consider this a classic, I don't consider it a classic, but I I do consider it a very important time in hip hop, a very good album. And, you know, Biggie, you know, definitely, you know, did his thing on this album. Um, so I move over to, to Life After Death, which, you know, unfortunately, it, it was, you know, released after, you know, Biggie Smalls, you know, 
unfortunate, you know, death, untimely death. But what I loved about this album was it was a lot of storytelling, a lot of storytelling on there as far as, you know, um, somebody's got to die, you know, niggas bleed, you know, I got a story to tell, which was my favorite joint on this album. You know, of course, it had the primo tracks on there, you know, Kicking the Door, Ten Crack Commandments, you know, the primo and the biggie duos, you know, I think stands alone. I think, um, is it better than Jay's and Primo's um, duets? I don't know, because, um, you know, Biggie's body of work is just so small, he really can't compare it to Jay. But for the, the tracks that Primo did with, um, with Biggie, you could tell that the chemistry that they had was, was really there. And, you know, and I was just unfortunate that we, you know, we weren't, we weren't able to, to hear any more, you know, from, you know, from these two. Now, of course, this is a double press, um, you know, and I think, you know, this came in light of, you know, Tupac's, Tupac's All Eyes on Me, who laid, you know, laid a double press album. I thought that it was about 12, if they just would have kept this to a, a solid press, I mean, with, with one press with 12 tracks on here, because I think it would have been such way more better than it was, in my opinion. You know, they had some tracks on there, you know, the that I thought that they really could have left off the album, like um, More Money, More Problems, you know, the joint, I got the dough with Jay-Z, uh, you know, I thought that I thought that could have been way better with those two, you know, coming off of Brooklyn's Finest, you know, then they come out with I Love the Dough, I thought it was corny, um, the joint with um, Little Kim, you know, um, uh, you know, and then the, the Player Hater, you know, a lot of people liked it, you know, with him um, kind of singing, I didn't, I thought it was corny, but, um, so I felt, uh, you know, a, a lot of tracks could have, you know, left, been left off this album. Um, some people, you know, a lot of people consider it a classic because, you know, it was his, you know, untimely death, last, you know, last release. And his death played a, plays a big part on why people call this album a classic. But, you know, without trying to, you know, be disrespectful, you know, at all, I just felt that you know taking his death out of this when when listening to this album when trying to critique this album, you know I don't think I don't think it was a classic. I think you know if the the source was still we were living it you know the source gave it five you know if I was being the um, critiquer on this album the critic I probably think that, that this is a four mic album you know solid a solid album but definitely not a classic. Um, a lot of people, you know, di disagree, you know. Please let me hear your opinions on, on on the album, both the albums. Which album you think is better, you know, Ready to Die or Life After Death? Me, personally, I can't put one up against the other. I think they're very both very good, solid projects, but I just don't think one outweighs the, um, the other. Um, I will say that, um, you know, listening, you know, when I actually re-listened to both these albums t um, today, you know, it was kind of, I rejoiced and felt kind of sad at the same time, just knowing that what Biggie was and what, you know, we wasn't, you know, kind of felt cheated that we weren't able to get more from them. You know, the body, you know, the body of work is, you know, very, you know, very small, you know, when it comes to, you know, Biggie Smalls and Notorious B.I.G. So, proof in the play, this is for you. My opinion is, they, they, I guess they come in as a tie. I don't, I don't know what you want me to say, but I can't, I can't put one up against the other. So, hey, this is Von Crusader. You're watching EMP. Thanks for tuning in. Huh? Then we all get laced, television.